This will be practical update number four about very popular solar industry right now and also how to take the idea like a theme and analyze it, break it down and figure out where to buy, where to sell, what to trade, what not. Is it even worth to uh, get involved with? So Solar ETF 10 from Invesco Power Shares has been around for a while, trades millions of shares per day. We're looking at a weekly five-year chart. So every bar is one week. And I selected this inspection feature here on the chart on the upper uh, panel, which gives you crosshairs. The vertical line will be on a timeline on whichever day you put it on. It will give you open, high, close, and volume, and everything else. But let's focus on the horizontal line right now. And I'm going to keep the cursor to the left so the box doesn't interfere with analysis. Uh, right now, the market is kind of making these boxes. The support and resistance line on top and on the bottom of price formation. They don't always do that. It just in the moment it happens to be like this. If you would take a horizontal line and you just roll through the chart up to bottom and you're looking for these points where something has changed, like here. See, on the top there was a well defined uh, range, at least on the bottom. And then right now we're going through this. 80 area that has been support back in the spring of 21 yeah then it was uh, it broke it down then it rallied again then it was support again in the summer of 21 rallied again broke it came back to it same area about 80 dollars now it's a resistance now it's a resistance and again in uh, uh, June 6, and now we broke it last week. Maybe it's the wiggles, it may turn around, just keep on going down. There is a 200 week moving average that confirms that we're in a long term bull market in here. But a 50 week moving average, which is very similar to 200 day moving average, is kind of curling down. It's been having a really hard time. Um, It's been having a really hard time in the beginning of this bear market from November to February. It fell some 40%. Yeah, if you click on the top and drag more or less the diagonally towards the bottom, it will give you, well, if you drag horizontally, it will give you a number of periods. So it took like 80 days for the uh, solar ETF to collapse by 45 or so but before that before that 55 uh, percent uh, down from uh, uh, top in 2021 but before that it rallied some 460 percent and these wiggles here on the bottom they seems like nothing but listen if you have a price going from like 15 to 130 for a long-term analysis and also to run some tests, like does your security actually respond to technical analysis? Many um, ETFs really don't because it's a mix of so many stocks. One stock goes up, one stock goes down, and you get something average on the ETF, uh, which could be hard to trade. So I switched to logarithmic scale right here on the bottom. Um, this way, every square on the bottom of the chart in percentage terms is the same as square on the top of the chart. You can compare apples to apples in terms of what would you do back in 18 and 19 before the market was broken for this um, terrible, terrible coronavirus crash that affected all the stocks. Uh, oops. Start uh, it affected all the stocks right here. All of them fell, but this one actually did not break any long term supports or moving averages. So let's see how it acted before. Let's take a horizontal line and try to. Not like this. And try to run it through the prices. Horizontal line goes through two tops. 
you have a resistance. And the 200 week moving average is falling. We're looking at 2018. Yeah? So it's falling, 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 and then it makes a double bottom. Double bottom, see there is some kind of action in between, and then uh, there is this one and this one. A double bottom. You can draw another horizontal line through it. Oy, 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 oy. Sorry. Let me do it again carefully. You can run another horizontal line through it. It doesn't click. There you go. So now you have some kind of a box right here. You have some kind of a box. It is also called a W bottom. A W bottom because it rem resembles letter W. See, so like this. Then you go like this. Then you go like this. Then you go like this. Like a letter W. Yeah? Very visual. Basically, you have uh, two lows and some kind of a hump in between. Once the price goes over that hump, right in here, you have your first buying point. We were just buying these recently from whatever boxes were breaking on a hard right side of the chart. Our broker, unfortunately, doesn't let us trade these, but we can learn a lot, a lot from it. Then later on, the price broke above moving averages, so you can set up a trade there. Then later on, that was already, what, a spring of 2019. It had some kind of a throwback. It didn't touch the long-term weekly moving averages, but I bet you there was something on a 50-day or 200-day. It was some kind of a throwback. So these are our three ideal entries. Breakout from some kind of a formation, some kind of a resistance, making new high. New high, your trend has changed. You have new highs, higher highs, uh, and... Uh, higher lows, that's an uptrend. So you can buy in parts here, here, and here, and then the stock rallies. The stock rallies, and the next line, we can make somewhere closer to the end, closer to the end of 2019. So first of all, let's say you draw this line, and you put a stop under it, somewhere here, and you stopped out. Well, this is a very successful trade. You just made in a, just a couple of short months, in a few months and maybe half a year, you made like 20%. Huh? And it never even came, I mean, it might have come to your purchase price, but you never were in any losses throughout any of this. So th this is a tremendously successful trade. And if you were to held it through this correction and maybe even buy some more, who knows? It's another correction. Yeah, we haven't had correction in a while. And this, let me clean it up a little bit. Um, all this time, here's another little correction and then up and up. Yep, then coronavirus, that, that was an accident and everybody lost money in one way or another. But let's say, you take these stops. Here, let me clean it up. Because now we are... Uh, now we're in 2020. Coronavirus happened. Yeah? And you're thinking, shoot. You know, what do I do? You draw another line. You draw another line. That's going to be hard. These stops one here and one here, 26 something, and this low, 27. Oh, make the line thicker, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and it will cover everything. Here, make this line thicker. Yeah, draw a crayon. There you go. Now you have an actionable support resistance line. That was resistance before and resistance again, and then it broke out. Where did it broke out? It broke out... Uh, broke out over here, yeah, and this is then, uh, uh, this is the retest, the first correction to this breakout, your time frame is not 
much longer. You know, you're analyzing several years of price action, not several months like you were doing in here on the bottom. So coronavirus happened. The sucker broke out again above this line over here. Then it broke out above the all the long-term moving averages somewhere here. It never gave any kind of a reaction. It just kept on going and going and going. And this uh, uh, rally yielded you something like 250%. Yeah? Because here you draw the line against these bottoms. And you also, I'm sure, since you are drawing the lines, by that time draw a line against these tops. You know, it created a new box. It broke b below it. And you have $250, half a position that you bought, let's say, in here. Is now eight, eight, almost nine hundred or something. Yeah? Pretty good trade. So it gives good trades. It's a tradable ETF. I want to warn that technical analysis on ETF is a fruitless endeavor because they sometimes whip around like crazy. Uh, now we have a new line going on, and this one is of uh, utmost importance to us right now. It goes through. <clears throat> well, the, right here you could not be identified yet. It probably was too small to care. Then it's more like an area, of course, because these lows were a little bit higher. Then it broke down, rallied, came to it here, came to it here, came to it here, didn't break. Rallied again. And then it broke down right over here. Now, once it collapsed... When it came back to this uh, 70, God knows what, uh, 8 or something, between 76 and 80, like a bend. When it came back to it, it failed. And it came back to it again, and it failed again. And it made a small box in here. And now it finally broke out. So this is like a purchase of... Uh, full position because it's over all the moving averages it's over 200 i think is it yeah it broke out leaped over 200 see the horizontal line that's your horizontal line on a daily chart it's even more pronounced that was a fake out damn you would buy it in here and immediately lose like 30 percent yeah. Or you put the bottom, you put the stop under recent bottoms, you put the stop under 50-day moving average, then you would be stopped out in here for 15% loss. Then re-enter again again, yeah? Because it's a little bit messy. It's an ETF. For ETF, it's pretty good. They, they sometimes much, much worse than this. Yeah? So uh, this was one of the reasons I was buying in here, plus some other reasons. That's your weekly chart. Two very important lines that you can see. And uh, uh, you can practice drawing these and running through them again and again, looking for a good purchase points and looking for your stop losses, where they would be, and calculating on the paper what it would cost you, looking for what kind of a mistake, I mean, what mistakes. What would you do if mar market whips you out? Let's say you, you did buy, you know, in here. It has to be considered because it, we had a high of 78.86 here. We had a high of 77.80 here. You say, you know what, I'm going to buy 79. You buy it and you buy the top. It, it kissed the 200-day moving average and immediately went down with no stopping by 12 13 percent or something so what do you do you still sell yes no if you sell when would you rebuy it's, it's a valid idea let's look at the etf invesco solar etf managed by invesco power shares trying to find some data a yield uh, most of these stocks don't pay any dividend because they many of them are relatively new they growing fast a lot of them are losing money it's not the kind of industry where you would expect to pay the dividend but also listen a 30 day yield of negative 0.1 percent this is not 
dividend. This is undividend. This is somebody taking your money from here. How can this be? Is the first question. Very, very interesting. Invesco Solar ETF is based on some kind of a energy index index. Yeah? And they're supposed to invest 90% in securities. Why 90%? Why not all of it? Are you timing the market? Are you trying to buy low and sell high? This is what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to give me an instrument in Vesco Power Shares. Very interesting. Um, you know what I'm looking for? The fees. The management fee of 0.5%. The expenses fee. The total expense ratio of 0 0.066551 minus 1. No, maths are really hard on solar ETF. This does not add up. Adds up. Let's look at the uh, portfolio. Oh, maths are hard. We're going to find something. Uh, most of the solars belong to informational technology, some utilities, industrials, financials, and even investment companies. Oh, solar ETF invests in investment companies. Now, classification is, can be confusing, so let's look more in detail. Most of the United States, China, Israel, Japan, good. Good, no Russia. <laughs> Today, no Russia is good. Top holdings. And Phase Solar Age for Solar HK, that's Hong Kong. Uh, ADR, that's somebody's foreign stock. Jinko Solar, that's Chinese. But it's our. The, the stock trades here in the United States. Uh, 2, 5, 7, 10, 12. Good ETF, you know. This uh, top 10 holdings is maybe about half of it. Yeah? So, you know, let, let's look what else they got in here can see how many stocks they got, so we're going to have to roll through it. Yeah, 60% of it belongs to information technology, uh, blah, 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 uh, what is it, uh, foreign stocks, a lot of foreign stocks, well, of course, solar is a global industry, they're all over the place, TT, I don't even know what country is it, Motec Industries, mm, uh, what they got in here, that's Japan, that's Hong Kong, Japan again, JP, um, industrials, RA technology, common stock at 2% of the ETF, um, materials, fin financials, Hanon Armstrong Sustainable Infrastructure Capital, which is Real Estate Investment Trust. That's not even from this industry. I wonder how they played out. That's financials, yeah? Cash. Cash, oh baby, I'm shocked, shocked to find out there's a currency gambling going on. So they got bazillion dollars in South Korean won, Taiwan, I'm being facetious, I saw this list before. They didn't have Taiwan, I think it's BAT or something, I don't remember what they call. I didn't have this before. Mm, 703 Israel shekels. That's actually, that's not thousands. See, 86 cents. Seven, short, yeah? Uh, short, North, Norway Krona. Short, Swiss Franc. Homicidal tendencies. Short, Euro. And money market fund. They don't even know what else to short. <laughs> so, thank God this one doesn't have any... Well, it probably has some fees. Oh, why do they need to keep this much money in cash? I don't understand. Aren't they supposed to buy solar stocks? <coughs> Maybe an easier way, because it's a, such a homogeneous uh, industry, all the stocks are pretty much the same. I mean, solar stocks are supposed to be a stock that makes solar panels and not um, a real estate investment trust and not a financial company. You can go to Finviz. And in the industries, find the doggone solar industry. Their classification is also sometimes a little bit uh, crooked, but at least it will be everything that trades in the United States, sorted by mar market cap. Oh, 15 million pineapple energy. You know, if you have 15 million dollars, you can buy, go and buy yourself a pineapple. You're buying a pineapple for 15 mil. Some people make 15 mil a year. Some of your bosses make 15 mil a year. <coughs> Peggy, yeah? Oh, oh, oh. oh, baby. 
and, and they lose half of it every year. So, yeah, the sea of red. I don't know if this is something to get involved with. Yeah, no insider trading because there is nothing else to sell. Monthly chart. Oh boy. Well, at least somewhere back in 2013, 14, 15, it made the whole bunch of bottoms. On a breaking of which at 21, you, get, you could have got stopped out and save yourself seven years and 95% of heartaches. Huh? Yeah. Let's go back to the list. Let's talk seriously. Market cap. So um, the top, let's say 10 stocks ending in RA technologies, ARRY, these are all that have billion dollar market caps. The end phase, solar edge and first solar are two of the biggest ones. Their PE is something cartoonish. Well, actually, no. You know, these days, if the company grows really fast, you can have PE in hundreds. It will not dissuade investors at all. And they trade millions of shares of a day. Some of them are not profitable. Yeah, but this is Canadian. Oh, that's who is from Israel, Solar Edge. Let's take a look at end phase, the biggest one. If you can make, cannot make money in the biggest leading stocks, the one that drive the industry, you're not going to make money in anything else at all. That's time proven, you know. And they belong to S&P 500, by the way, end phase energy. Yeah, is an S&P 500, and they make $200 million a year, uh, and sales in billions, price to sales, is, that's prohibitive, you know, to pay 20 times sales, well, they grow a lot, their growth numbers are through the roof, insider sells, institution owns 74%, that, that's not so bad, the short ratio doesn't matter, large debts, yeah. Large debts over here, big debts, all in red, you don't even need to calculate it. 2,200 people working for it, it's a small factory. Uh, very popular among analysts, upgrades, downgrades, keep working. News, the, the stock tweets, insiders sell. Well, they have something to sell, they sell it. That, that, that's, that's normal, yeah, and phase energy. On a monthly time frame, no. <laughs> In 2017, it was 76 cents. It probably split adjusted. I think they split and resplit. And, and now it's $288, all time highs just recently painted, painted days ago. So this is a rocket, yeah, a spaceship. No question about it. For solar, one of my fetish favorites, I made and lost thousands of dollars trading options on for solar in the beginning of this century. So it fell a lot. It's been in hundreds of dollars and it fell in 2011 and 2012, made a low of some like $20 or $12, yeah, $10. And then it had a big rally, two year rally. And then you see, it met the same tops around 70 in 2014, in 2016, in 2018, almost got there in 19, finally broke it in 20, came back to that just recently. Remember I told you when the stocks fall a lot, like lose 90% of their value, yeah, there could be a rally of several weeks, months, even years, as you can see. And the first one was a beautiful low volatility advance from 12 to 30. You could have done that and be done with solar stocks, by the way, back in 2012, like in this period. Um, after that, for years and years, it was bumping in this making gigantic base, but also dead, you know, valley of death. Just doesn't go anywhere, up and down. Very hard to trade, by the way. It just seems like you buy the bottom, sell the top, and retire early. These things are very hard to trade. They call it valley of death. When something falls off the mountain, and it needs to go through the valley until it gets to another mountain. They call it valley of death because investors die over here. Uh, old uh, analyst Luis Yamata also used to say that the bigger the base, the higher in space. This is a base of seven to 10 years wide. And it just started the advance. 
the last time it went hundreds and thousands of percent, uh, the end phase went up thousands of percent, the for, sol for solar can do the same. It's not in a, any kind of an index. It still makes billions of, on sales of billions, it makes hundreds of millions. Their P's and price to sales ratios are more normal, three times price f to sales. Their debts are more normal. They are inside their transaction. No, they also, yeah. Um, yeah, what else is here? 4,800 people don't pay any dividend. Uh, the analysts are here, the news, the stock tweets, and they sell insiders, sell, they exercise options and sell them as fast as they can, some of them. Um, somebody bought. Well, chief financial officer, CFO, Bradley Alexander, bought almost 2,000 shares out of clear blue sky in August, two days ago. Really? At the cost of $100? He does it? Why would he do it? They don't give him free shares? Or they given him free shares? And he sold it. I think he just pressed the wrong button. He must have pressed the wrong button. It must be a mistake. He only sells. All right. Um, so what I did, I took um, solar. I took uh, all the... Uh, Um, I took all the solar stocks and I put them, uh, so here's US and P and solar ETF and the top 10 solar stocks in the order of market cap are on this list and the relative line, you know, you can, this is relative to S&P, you can change it as relative to solar 10, relative price relative to solar ETF and then you will see that then phase outperforms its own ETF. You don't need to buy an ETF. You can buy this one and make more money. And for solar is not so much, but maybe it's changing. And uh, Jinko Solar has been up and up and up. But Jinko is a Chinese company. I don't know and if you want to do Chinese companies. This one is very interesting, by the way. Has been underperforming. Now it's outperforming. Broke out from the these two tabs just recently. Very interesting company. I don't know how much time I have left. <clears throat> so let's take all these stocks and put them into performance chart feature. Holy mama, there's too much going on. <clears throat> Where is S&P? S&P 500 is a red one. That's S&P. Yeah. Well, hom yeah. well, homogeneous industry. All the squeeze wiggles are the same, and volatility is about the same. What is this one? End phase, yeah. Uh, we got to find some kind of a relative period. We got to find relative period, let's say, from the beginning of 2021. S&P 500, the red line on the top, it's still kind of up, and all of these were out, out underperforming. Array Technologies was the worst of all. Now, let's take a look at the period. Um, when was it? What am I looking at? I forgot. So from beginning of 21 to beginning of 22, this last correction. Beginning of 21 to beginning of 22. There was still a rally in most of them. Yeah, that's not so good. Uh, what is it, weekly? That was the rally, but uh, ETF was up just a little bit, and most of the stocks were much more. So let's look from November, this recent bear market, from November of 21 to spring of 
в твой ту. S&P went down, uh, S&P 500 was coming down just a little bit at that time. It was just the beginning. Nobody knew this is a bear market yet. It was still a correction and ongoing bear bull market and then a pretty mild one at that. But the solars were hit by some 40, 60, 50 percent. They, you know, really can move a lot. What's that green one? And face. What's that? Jinko. Yeah, Jinko. Let, let's not do Chinese. And after that, since the spring of this year, the S&P 500, that's this red line down below. And who's rallying the most? RA technology up by 80%. Scholz, also one of the smaller one. Jinko, let's not do that. Canadian Solar, if the trackers don't block them. Sunrun, yeah, they're, they're all here. It doesn't even matter which one to buy. But RA is very interesting. RA is very interesting. Uh, in the ETF, it's like 2%. Broke out above 200 day moving average. That's your horizontal line. Yeah. I would expect all of them to come down a little bit. I'm waiting for something else to happen. I want to show... Um, so your watch lists, I'm going to update this. I'm thinking of putting, um, I'm thinking of putting, I don't have it here anymore, um, solar ETF and face, said, uh, forgot what this one is called, the Israeli company, the first solar and RA for now. You can read about the rest of the companies and tell me what they do and if you want something else in there. But this is what we're going to start with. Also, um, in a, you have to trade from your own watch list. Until it's on a watch list, you cannot do anything. I added the technology companies, the high tech that we sp talked about last time. You have Facebook, that's Meta, still under all the moving averages, did not break any of the bugs. This breakout failed, so I wouldn't do anything at this time. Microsoft is breaking out right now. Well, maybe later on. Uh, NVIDIA and CRM Salesforce, yeah? So Salesforce, I wanna, um, no, this one, uh, CRM. It's a very big, very important, very strong uh, company. And, uh, there is a box that's been going on since February of last year, basically. Well, not box, line. It's uh, the bottom is not well defined, but this line you can find it easily. You just roll the horizontal da line down through the chart, and it will pick for you these areas where it comes and goes, where it comes right here and goes, 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 and maybe it comes again now. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy it through one of my simulators, the single stock simulator. I had here some buy orders that were set on uh, uh, buy stops. They all triggered. Some of them are not very good. I'm going to talk about it next time. Like Uber was bought way later than I was expecting. It just blew through my um, stop, uh, buy stop order and bought itself at a higher price. I have Airbnb, Shopify, Uber, and UPS all in half size positions because all of them are 100, under 200 day moving average. Yeah? We're not even supposed to trade them yet. Uh, and I'm gonna buy CRM right here. CRM, click trade, uh, buy. Yeah, and here you can roll the slider for whatever your account is. It will let you buy, or you can just say, "I wanna buy two shares," and then click elsewhere on the page, and it will change the totals for you. Now you're buying three hundred seventy-nine dollars. They order just for today or good till cancel we trade on a good till cancel if i put a buy stop i'm gonna come and cancel it myself you know the day orders their time will come it's not today it, it, nowhere in the future uh, no, nowhere in the near future we're gonna be trading day orders here good till cancel and you can choose either market or limit order or stop order so i'm just gonna go ahead and buy it at the market i'm gonna buy one share because you got $500 is a one position. Half a position is 250. Uh, two shares would be 
379, I cannot do that. So I need to do less. I need to do 189, yeah? And then you, I don't know why it doesn't show the bottom of it. Uh, and then you click Submit Order, View your portfolio. There is a small delay, uh, usually, and uh, it will be bought. Boom, it's already bought. No delay today, easy to buy. You have your portfolio that you can sort in a different ways. You can see how this portfolio was doing over time. Portfolio performance. Uh, that uh, um, even though I had it, it, it didn't buy anything up until a few days ago. All the buy stops were sitting here. It wasn't buying anything. See, it was uh, um, performance. It didn't have anything. I have another simulator, which is for ETFs. Yeah? The ETF has uranium, online, spiders, and uh, solar ETF. Yeah? And their performance, you need to click portfolio. And uh, that performance, uh, these have been buying for a while, so right now the portfolio is up about 2%. It was uh, down... It was down a little bit under 1% since I started buying it only a few days ago. So you need to join it and become one of the players. Hey, there you are. Hello. How you doing? I can look at your portfolio. I can look at your pending orders. You don't have any pending orders. You need to put a pending order in here. <laughs> pending order, if you put a stop order to buy something and it just price didn't get to it yet, it will appear in pending orders until you cancel it or I think until the uh, dividend comes. When the dividend comes, they cancel these orders because they cannot reconcile the dividends. So, welcome, welcome to Matrix uh, Compact Version Simulator. Have a nice day.